the money that I was leaving was insane. But for me, it was not about a stake, right? It was about building something sustainable, right? Build a poor product that world respects, right? Building something amazing. <music> Hi guys, I'm Bhupendra, founder and CEO of Doxichu. Welcome to Backstays with Millionaires. Today, I'm going to share my story, starting from Nepal, a small village called Urlavari, selling vaccines, to setting up this doctorate company in Bangalore and selling the product globally in about 11 countries. So I, I actually come from a very small uh, village called Urlavari, and uh, our family business was a small pharma shop. And uh, we all were involved, right? It was more of like not only my dad's business, but everybody, all of our family's business. Uh, and one moment that I can recall is when I was in class nine. So this hepatitis B uh, threat was uh, like getting bigger. Um, it got into me that why don't we sell it? It's a opportunity for us to make money where, and people need it, right? That is a inherent need. Uh, so I started talking to the distributors. So uh, when I started talking to them, uh, I realized that if we buy in bulk, there is a good discount that we were getting. And uh, I asked my brother, uh, like, let's get it. And when we were discussing, like, he, he started telling me, like, I'm crazy, like, we don't even have customers, and then it's a uh, vaccine is a not top selling product, right? And you can't uh, bank on that. So I started working backwards, right? how do I make it happen? Then I, I thought like uh, this school should be a good target. So I went and talked to different schools and I, talk, I, I told the principals that uh, like you need to implement this, you need to declare this because it is a threat, number one. Number second is if you tell, send your uh, school kids to our uh, place to get the vaccine, you're going to get uh, about some discount, right? I, th I, I think it was about 10% that I, I promised few people. And uh, so two schools agreed to get it, right? We almost finished, I think, one lot order within our pharmacy itself, right? We did two bulk orders, not one, right? So that was the first uh, thing, entrepreneurial thing, uh, which I remember uh, that I helped my, my family earn. Uh, money uh, and uh, and it gave, it, it gave, actually gave me a good boost, right? Something I made it happen, even though I didn't know that that was an entrepreneurial thing. I was just doing it as a kid, right? So in Nepal, uh, after plus two, there is a culture that you do not choose college, you choose countries. Which country do you want to go? I thankfully like uh, I got Indian embassy scholarship, so I came to India. And uh, like I started studying in NIT Durgapur in West Bengal. Me and my friend, my very good friend of mine, Binit Thapa, who was uh, like w with me. So we were uh, discussing about doing some summer project, right? So Binit uh, liked studying uh, astrology. So he used to uh, he read palms and read foreheads and numerology used to do. Then I told him like, let's build a software of that. Right, so we started with numerology because it's easier to program. Then we went forward with implementing uh, like uh, uh, the astrology, this Hindu astrology, which is uh, based on Kundli, we call it. Then, like uh, we needed to make it uh, like better. Uh, like you have to, re you need to read the palms and you need to read the foreheads, right? So we both started studying uh, image processing right then in uh, like third year so what we we did is uh, we did the xerox of our hand doing like this right and then you get in a paper and you use the image processing technique to read it but you know what happened was in the college it was a hobby project we built it it, it we didn't take anywhere you know after 10 years I actually 10 to I think 10 or 15 years maybe later uh, I got to know that there are uh, there are huge players in astrology right even today like I feel that we should have done it and later our the hard disk crashed and then we don't have anything left right even today Vinit and I sometimes talk about it that we should have done something building that actually prepared me to build any product that I can think of. So we were 462 uh, people in, a, in our batch and, uh, and among them, I was the 462nd guy to get a job. 
most of our batchmates had got a job because they sat in campusing and as a nepali student a foreigner i was not allowed to sit and uh, when i came out uh, i thought like i'm more uh, equipped or i'm more willing to do uh, a business job or a consulting job right and i had read about this fancy jobs uh, about investment banking and consulting right so i started applying all of those for some time and i i didn't get any any even i didn't get a call so i finally decided after about one and a half two months that i should get at least any job but then i think it was already getting late so everybody's first question after that would be like uh, why didn't you get a job the four months passed and uh, i was seriously like uh, started um, little bit to doubt myself but internally i i i, I thought uh, uh, that that is something wrong uh, there was a advertisement in times of india saying like if you are from the top colleges iits and iits and all those like few of the colleges uh, and if you have a business acumen apply right it was from global analytics in chennai there was a walk in so i went for the walk in and uh, there were so many people right i couldn't even uh, enter the gate i actually like went back to my friend's place in Ch- in chennai itself i couldn't get inside right uh, then like um, i wrote an email i wrote it saying that i came from bangalore right and this is what happened and i am from nid so i th- i think i should at least get a chance right then i got a call right so i went back the next day and uh, they took five interviews right one after the other i like and uh, like i passed all of them when i like got the offer right so it was probably like one of the most exciting in my batch <laughs> so uh, so when i started doing the job for 144 days i did not take a single break after after about uh, like 8 uh, months right 8 uh, months i got four promotions actually <laughs> so uh, so that was very very exciting i got promotions was one part the other part was like um, i had become very integral part of the company in 8 months right so this this happened in uh uh 2005 time and uh 2007 uh, uh, i actually moved uh, to ferrezac uh, fico corporation so currently now it is fico at global uh, in, as working in a startup i was having a habit of working very long hours and working very hard right so i needed a lot of work in a big company what happens is like you don't get enough work right uh, then i started uh, blogging very actively right i and uh, i started a blog called business analytics uh, in 6 months it actually became the india's number one analytics blog so a lot of the people started uh, uh, taking notice but in that middle like one day i get a email right Uh, from the head of marketing of uh, sorry head of analytics of Citibank, saying he wants to meet me, so <laughs> I went and met him and uh, Anunay Gupta. So he actually proposed me. Uh, I am going to start a company with one of my friend who is the head of marketing at UB. So you become our third partner. Obviously, I loved FICO, but you know it was always in me that I should start something, and that got kicked from inside. he sent me an offer i went through it uh, it didn't matter it was a uh, lower salary than fair isaac <laughs> and anure next day he called me and he said bubi did you go through the offer and uh, i told him yes i did so i agreed to it we did not bargain right so uh, we started market intelligence had nothing no website right nothing so uh, we built it and after uh one year after a year right we started there was some deviation between the company that i wanted to build and roy and anune wanted to build right that is when i i told anune and roy i called them and i said it we were at a, high, at a very high moment right but then i told them that i think guys it it's time that i should 
come out of market illicit and start a software product company and uh, obviously like with my uh, stake that i had at at esops and everything and the valuation that we, we were growing the money that i was leaving was insane but for me it was not about stake right it was about building something sustainable right build a poor product that world respects right building something amazing and uh, and in the in that period like uh, i started thinking about uh, a product a uh, reporting platform right where people could upload data from anywhere and every employee in the company who needs to read a, get a report gets the report that he needs to get it right and uh, during this time uh, i met uh, through a common friend right uh, i met uh, rohit uh, rohit gupta who actually became my co-founder uh, my friend in uh, simplify i in in a casual uh, lunch uh, like uh, like i i i told him okay rohit i have a plan and i think uh, this could be done and the world needs it so rohit said that is perfectly doable we could do it right so rohit i and then like uh, like uh, like we got four other uh, friends of ours right we were totally six people we started uh, so i came out of market illicit and we started this company called inrev so uh, inrev was for in information revolution so the company that i gave that name and uh, we started building this but then another like uh, struggle of my life started because 2008 Uh, there was a massive uh, stock market stock market crash right and after that when we started in 2009 january everybody was in the mode of saving their job nobody was going to take any risk nobody was going to look at any new platforms and we started discussing like what do we do because we're not making money then suddenly like uh, somebody uh, like tweeted saying le plan that's my twitter handle you are the most followed guy in india then i i i called uh, my team we start discussing and then we thought uh, why don't we actually build something in social media itself then we build a platform called bajom feed social media data for us was simple you feed the twitter api you feed the facebook api and it's done right so you, we built this and we launched it called bajom so we got so popular like we our users count was just increasing like 1000 10000 and 20000 50000 and 100000 and we got covered in pc world in forbes and like as the top 5 twitter analytics platform in the world pc world covered us like that then we we uh, built simplify 360 which uh, is the product that exists today right uh, as a social media listening platform we built it uh, we built from scratch So this Simplify 360 platform uh, went and became in next two years, right, the market leader in India in the digital and social media analytics space. So we walked through the journey, right. Then we got investment in 2013-14, right, and uh, it took uh, to a decent size. So we are profitable, uh, like 56, 50, about 40, 45, 50 people. then i started thinking i think uh, we should probably have a celebrity sales guy and uh, and during that time like i found somebody who was heading the sales for hp software wanted uh, to be part of the company so i proposed him the ceo position and uh, because i thought you know like ceo is a job all right and uh, simplify 360 is my baby so it obviously was a, was the most difficult decision of my life right i don't think anything was harder than that but i thought that having ajay to be the ceo was the most logical step for the company then i co- communicated this to the board to my friends obviously they were not happy right and then they said like you're just leaving us in the middle but i convinced them why it was necessary and uh, finally i came out right i remember coming out of the board meeting right and extremely happy because i convinced them that uh, it happened the way that i wanted i came out and after half an hour i felt like crying at the top of my voice because i felt like i don't know who i was then 
I always told everybody that I am I am a Simpla 360 CEO. Anybody introduction was itself that, right? And uh, now what I am, right? What do I do from tomorrow? In the morning I wake up and what do I do? Then uh, after a lot of soul searching, a uh, lot of uh, deep diving, diving into myself, right? And then exploring what I want in my life, I figured out I have only two passion in my life, right? One is analytics and data. The other is food. I'm passionate about food, so I figured out that I should do something in food. And I registered a company called Khanal Foods Private Limited without knowing what am I going to do in food. But I thought I have to enjoy, right? So it has to be food. Then, as I come from Nepal, so I obviously connected with Himalayas uh, very closely. Then I thought I should start my research from there. So I went there on trip. So we explored a lot of things, and I also went with my wife. So we had uh, some of the like friends who were running dairies. and uh, they they were some of them were making this uh, yak milk chews right and their complaint was the dogs steal it me and my wife see we are like uh, we understood dog and then when we were thinking about this as a product she told me in the evening our discussion we two that i think bupi we should drop everything and just take this product you say yak milk You say Himalaya, you say grain free, you say gluten free, you say hundred percent natural, right? People will love it. So, uh, so then, like, uh, I dropped the idea of doing anything else. So, I think this is the product. I got it, right? So, uh, we zeroed in in that product, and ultimately we launched it uh, in few months. So we started all this work in September in 2015, uh, February 2016. We had the product ready. Uh, I think about six months later, we started getting international queries. So in 2016, like uh, we got an importer from Spain. Uh, 2017 early, like we got a buyer from UK. So uh, so the journey it became very very exciting. Like uh, like year and year, our growth rate uh, has been amazing. and as we speak like we are selling in 11 countries now and uh, we just uh, did a, a massive launch of our second line of product after this uh, himalayan chews which is called doxy crunch which is the healthy uh, treats another healthy treats for dogs which is freeze dried fruits for dogs right so we just launched in the global pet expo so that was our uh, uh, the fifth international event but the first in the us we got a phenomenal response and i'm hoping that there is a lot coming from uh, us uh, last month we signed both uh, japan and italy uh, distributors all right and uh, this is the year that uh, is going to be amazing and i'm looking forward to that so this is my story starting from a small village in nepal called urlavari trying to sell vaccines to setting up a dog treat company called Doxychew and uh, selling it globally hope you enjoyed my journey and if you did please feel free to share with your friends and if you have any questions please comment uh, below at some point of time i'll try to answer your queries and if you have a dog you can always get our product at doxychew.com uh, or uh, in a pet uh, shop near near you and uh, if you uh, give your uh, furry kid our product i can assure you that uh, your furry kid will love it and as a dog uh, parent uh, you will uh, enjoy giving out treats uh, with no guilt as it has no preservatives and it is 100% natural thanks for watching have a nice day